All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your favorite animal scientist, the CEO of Kesta Amos Consultancy Services Limited. We are back here in Ekawa Road on this poultry project we've been doing for quite some time. And actually, I have been away for some time. You know, usually we bring these videos in series and stages, but I'm actually doing my postgraduate studies as well, so it hasn't been easy mixing work and schooling. So sometimes I usually send my boys to do most of this job. So uh, why I'm actually explaining that is because we've stocked the farm. Uh, ideally, I should have been on ground when we do, we do the stocking, but I wasn't around as I had other things drawing my attention. So we are just going to show you the stage where we are now. Actually, we brought in some broilers, uh, strictly broilers are what we have on the farm now. We are still working on the uh, waste collectors and the dryer and all of that. You know, we have uh, a scraper and also the dryer. So we are trying to get the channels well prepared before we bring in the broiler, sorry, the layers. So for now, while we're doing all of that, we've actually introduced the broilers for them to be growing. They're already three weeks now. Some are three weeks, some are two weeks. So we have them in two different buildings. So we're going to show you all of that. And we're also going to show you the, uh, the level or the, um, how far we've gone with the layer construction for the waste collector and the dryer and all of that. So we're just going to walk you through the entire premises. So you can see this is uh, the farm we have in Ekawa Road. And here is the poultry farm. So I'm going to take you straight into the poultry and show you the beds, what they look like now. Okay. All right, so this is the layer structure, sorry, the broiler structure, where we plan to use for brooding the layers from chicks to point of lay pullets then move them to the cages but since we are still working on the cages we are not done with the cages and the trenches to take out the waste we deemed it necessary to start with broilers because this place is ready so instead of waiting for us to get the cages in order the layer houses in order why not start doing something instead of wasting time so there's no time to be wasted with brush in uh, from the broilers. So you can see these are the broilers. They're actually 2,000 birds here and they are doing very fine. We have at least 1 kg, 1.1 kg and so on in 3 weeks. So these ones are just 3 weeks old. We are going to take you to the other side where we have them 2 weeks old. So you see the difference. Now you can see the drinkers here. So these ones are uh, semi-automated. Why we call it semi-automated is because the feeding is not automated, so we still have to do some manual job here. So the attendant still goes inside to do the feeding, but the water flows in naturally. So you can see them drinking from the drinkers and also the feeders. We are going to be handling the feeders today uh, because, like I said, I haven't been consistent here. Otherwise, we would have shown you the preparation of this builder. If you look. Down that way, you'll see an area that is blocked or partitioned. That is where the brooding was done. So I actually sent my boys to come down to do the brooding and all of that. So unfortunately, we couldn't do the video. Uh, as we progress with time, most videos will be coming even when I'm not around. My boys will be doing the videos in order to see that we meet up with the different stages of production. So uh, bear with us on that. Just like I said, mixing academic works and uh, uh, field work is not always easy. So that's why we have this now. We're just showing you when the beds are already three weeks old. All right, so we're going to take you now to the other structures and show you exactly what's been going on with the other structures. All right, so uh, here is our greenhouse. So you can see the greenhouse, you can see how neatly it is done. So nothing can actually enter into this greenhouse. Even if it's hands, hands cannot penetrate this net. And uh, this net is very, very durable. So you can see the wild snail. 
come closer let them have a view of this i know many of you don't know the name of this snail this is called limicularia aurora that's a snail that we used to play as kids they call it toy but the scientific name is limicularia aurora you can google it and you'll see that so you see it's outside it can't penetrate this uh wall so that's how finely this is designed and you can see the vegetation inside is pretty green inside so uh of course <laughs> you've seen a lot of videos on that before all right so this once again we brought you in here before you can see the cages these are foreign cages they are imported cages and we've got good dealers in nigeria and lagos where we can get you cages like this and they are very very easy to uh, manage and maintain as well so this is the layer house we're still working on it now you can see some of the engineers are still around they're doing some plumbing work so we come down through here this is where the waste is supposed to be collected from and we're just breaking out the holes where we push it into so if you come over to this side you'll see the scraper yeah this is a scraper under here come down let them have a, a good view of it so this is a scraper so you can see that it's still very much a work in progress so we are not done here no still on this side so uh you can see the role of the cages and we are actually doing some um, clean up so the young man over there is actually washing the cages but we are preparing gradually for we are preparing gradually for stocking too so you can see that the washing and the cleaning of the cages are ongoing so let's show you the channel outside well done madam let's show you the channel outside Okay, so you can see it here. You can see it here. This is where it comes from, and it's gonna run down like this. So it's running into a pit where we'll be having a dryer to take this thing and dry it immediately. So the smell and everything is completely off. So you go to the poultry house, you won't perceive any smell. So that's the idea. So it's actually automated to an extent though not fully automated so it comes out like this and it flows like this so we are not done with this as well we're still going to do some flooring here and casting to ensure that the runoff can go smoothly and this part is going to be higher than that side so it can run gently so you can see this is part of the scraper this is what actually drags the scraper and releases it so we are going to show you all these things by the time we stop so we are taking it one step at a time we like to give you detailed analysis of everything we are doing so let's move ahead and leave the head of the other scraper so you can see down here and also the waste collector here it comes in and it keeps running so we have the other structure here with cages fully installed and it keeps running so while the other one runs down here this one comes and joins with it and it keeps running all right so this is our dryer we just kept it here we're not done with uh, the work out there so we're still storing it here this is supposed to be a grass cutter house that is still incomplete remember this is an integrated farm so it's a mixed livestock farming uh enterprise so uh, we are still having a lot of work to do on this part in order to bring in the grass cutters too so at the complete phase of the work you're going to see everything from every stage all right so the pits keep running until this point so this is where everything comes into and we're going to have a dryer here that's going to take suck it off and dry it then we bag it so the issue of smell and all of that is no longer going to be there 
So we have roofed it just in case it's raining, it won't affect the drying process or affect the machine from working. So that's what we've done. So this is actually designed, this is another structure that we designed for broilers actually. But we have some excess cages. The client had some cages before they brought in these uh, foreign cages. So we just brought them here temporarily for use. So that has warranted us dividing this structure into two to make one side broiler and this side uh, layer cages. So when you pop in, you see the broilers we have here. And our carpenters are still working, so bear with us. So these are two weeks old broilers. So you can see the size here that is smaller than what we had on the first one. So these are the broilers. But once we bring in the layers here, there will be no broiler here because the proximity is too close. So this structure is going to be used for either layers strictly or broilers strictly. We can't have layers here and have broilers here. But since the layer venture has not kicked start, we deemed it necessary to use the structure for broilers for now. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. This is just for the layer and broiler section of this farm. So we also have pig farm coming in. Uh, of course, we have a fish farm. We're just going to give you a view of the backside. There are mobile ponds, the tarpaulin ponds. From the last video we made here, you saw that as well. So we'll just give you a view of it and uh, we'll call it a day. So once again, you have your brain out here, finely built, well constructed. And you can see the, the side of this, it's all neatly arranged. Yeah, and this is our underground well where the waste water from the fish pond is drained into. You know, these days in fish farming, one of the major challenges people face is where to uh, dump the water. So it's always best to have an underground water system. So once you let out the water, it sucks it down into the underground well. So we don't have issue of water loitering the environment or logging the environment. So that's what we've done. So you can see the pit from whence it comes. And finally, these are the tarpaulin ponds, just to give you a view of them. And most of them are empty because we just did some harvesting from what I was told, and a few of them are still having some big fishes. So uh, the video is already long enough. Uh, we just want to say thank you. Uh, of course, we've given you stages of this farm to an extent, so we can't just leave it there. When we stopped it, we promised you that we're going to bring you the video when we stopped it. Unfortunately, because of my postgraduate studies, I haven't been consistent to take it uh, the way I would want it to go, but I, I still hope you appreciate this. So this is it. We're going to come back to you, of course, when it's time for us to stock the uh, pullets into the cages. So we're going to bring that video, and when we start establishing other areas like the pig, the goats, and so on, we're going to bring you a new video on this. So for now, it's thank you. God bless you. We always appreciate your comments. And to reach us, the number to call is plus two three four eight zero six eight five two five zero three two. And once again, I remain my humble self, Mr. Amos Kester Ebiwi, the CEO of Kester Amos Consultancy Services Limited. I'm sure that is already advertising itself. All right, so thank you. God bless you and bye-bye.